sorry about that. So, uh, Peter, you were going to discuss about the spec update rule. Uh, yes, I think there's two bigger issues that are currently blocking a little bit the development of version two. One is this uh, physical, logical, lexical layer that is currently being uh, discussed uh, very actively. And the other thing is, I think we need some rules on how we're going to move forward with the versioning of the specs because we want to make version what we call version two. It sounds like a major version to have it all backward compatible. Um, and yeah, I think we need to put on paper and I've listed this in an issue what uh, those rules could be because it makes it a bit difficult for now to vote on certain issues to know, yeah, this is a good approach, this follows the rules or um, yeah, I, I, I'm happy I wrote something down that at least for me, I don't work in the blind, but I think we should, yeah, agree on a set of rules so we know how we want to move forward. And the main idea is that a data package JSON that is part of a data set that is deposited somewhere should always be valid in the future. That's I think my rule that we can add things to data to the to the specs. We can remove restrictions, but for the current properties that it is very difficult to add restrictions that would then invalidate an old data package JSON that is deposited somewhere. And the reason is because data sets are deposited somewhere, are archived long-term. It's very hard to change those. Sometimes it's impossible to change those. You will always have those versions. While the software that is understanding the frictionless specs or understanding a data package is much easier to update. So if you have a new data set that makes use of new features in the spec, it is not yet supported by software, I find that less of a problem than an old data package JSON becoming invalid because the specs have updated. Um, there's been some discussion around it, but together with the governance model that or governance model that we have that that page is published, I think we should also like discuss those rules and maybe have them on the website as well, so we can have like some checks if something is proposed if it follows this or not. So that's yeah. another way of saying that uh, the the version two is always a superset of the what is existing already, the version one? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, that does you... Yeah, it does also block us in certain things or things that could be more elegant uh, or that were oversights in version one. Um, yeah, you could think, well, how many use cases are we blocking uh, by by adding this to be, make it more elegant? But yeah, I, I think there's two things needed. One, I think we need rules and we should discuss those rules. I don't know what's the best forum to discuss those rules. This can easily take up this whole call. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would be good to have the same, that, that we're on the same page. Yes. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. And thanks, Peter, already for having started putting those down in that GitHub issue that I linked uh, in the chat. Uh, Edgar, you wanted to say something and then Keith. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to add that currently, I think the advocacy development uh, was following this rule about being superset in every new version because uh, we still maintain in the specs uh, some like super early version uh, things like uh, resource URL or like um, different ways of providing um, date time formats. So um, that's, yeah, we need to write it down, but I think for now it's kind of like it's the case. We're going to yeah, have this uh, compatibility like forever. Also, I wouldn't say like in a you know kind of like like ever or whatever because we don't know. Like, consider currently we have um, like X data packages in the world in, like created and was like consider like super exciting version two. Then it's on Zenodo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And later it will be like uh, one thousand X in two years. So maybe uh, like dropping some 
pre-version one thing might make sense. Maybe maybe on different levels, like uh, data, like consumer has to read this data, but still market like invalid uh, descriptor, for example, or war, worms or something like this. So something, yeah, like open, like having like door open, but in general, yeah, I agree with the rule and it's easy to keep, you know. Yeah, so I also generally agree. I wonder if there is maybe a middle ground where we can decide um, or kind of lean towards conservatism and backwards compatibility, but also if we see some really ugly aspects that, you know, only in hindsight we can recognize and see a clear path forward, we can adopt those. And then I guess a uh, sort of related question. So you don't think it would be enough or is the concern of having breaking backwards compatibility that you would be shifting the burden to the in uh, code base to be able to support multiple versions? And because I could see that being a justification for why you wouldn't just want to have like a version one parser and a version two parser and that kind of thing. But that is also a possibility. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's that's the alternative that people indicate what version of data package they used and then it's probably data package as the whole set of standards that's where all the specifications move at the, at the same version that you have one version for anything in data package that is what we use for camp prep dp i'm i don't know how successful that is going to be where the people have to indicate what version of camp prep dp they use so that the consumer uh, software knows oh it's this version and we are maintaining the R package that is going to read CamTrap DP, and we're going to always up convert to the latest version. But by knowing what version a package is in, we can also know, oh, okay, it's this version. We need to do these transformations to get it to the latest version. Data package so far has ne never worked that way. I mean, it's version less, and you can use many features. If we start doing that, where people have to indicate the version, we're always going to have many data packages out there already that we then have to assume are version one. And then it becomes a requirement to indicate your version. It allows us a bit more flexibility, but you put more, you, you move burden away from defining the specs to publishers and implementers. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's an alternative. And these are the kind of decisions I think we, we have to make. Uh, so we know. And yeah, and I agree with Jenny that yeah, we have to choose a starting point. So the early, early versions before it was released on the website and people started using data package. I don't know how old data package is now, but I mean, I can assume that somebody who published a data set three, four years ago is still expecting it to work. But when you used the very first version of it or a very exotic feature that nobody else used again it's very hard to assess if it is exotic um but yeah i think we have those two routes either we always make it backward compatible and never use the versions or we start using versions yeah thanks peter uh Evgeny, do you want to respond to that and then keys um yeah, so basically, really good uh, timing uh, because uh, in my version of a milestone list, I'm basically already uh, gone through like all the issues, proposing something or starting discussion. So uh, the rest for issues currently all related to this like meta meta level versioning profiles. So basically, I Honestly, don't know yet what I uh, what I would you know propose. So start discussion about, uh, but that's what I'm going to do to think at least uh, yeah for to start discussion about versioning. And I agree that, that it might you know simplify things if we have at least major version for data packages. So an implementation can uh, you know support version one and version two support like differently something it, it won't be like so breaking as Peter mentioned. What kind of aspects of the early frictions are we talking about that in hindsight are uh, are a bad idea or shouldn't have 
been implemented? Can you give an example? Uh, yeah, I think kind of we're in a good place because we don't have any like uh, conceptual like wrong things. Things needs to be changed like uh, like the bigger things. It's only like super minor like property renaming or simple example. So in the version like pre version one, you, you could uh, define the time format using uh, like one string format uh, like dots and the format and in the version one it was changed to be like without this prefix that basically it's so it's one one string uh, mapping in the implementation to support this uh, the most the biggest I think was uh, that currently resource path can be an URL or a, like local path. And previously it was two options, uh, two properties, resource path and resource URL. So it, it were kind of like free path URL and data. And now it's two, but uh, it's also a super simple uh, implementation wise uh, mapping. Okay, that doesn't sound too, too yes. serious and it's fairly easy to implement in the software. No mostly additions right or um, things are getting more relaxed or more flexible i mean uh, like another example can be for example if now we're working on the party or scheme table schemas it might require unique file names and it's probably like more important to think more uh kind of like breaking so we just need to think how to like to play it in the specification, backward compatibility notes, etc. So yeah, for, from time to time, it's obviously uh, projects like this like uh, run into situation when it's kind of like at least partially breaking or might be breaking. Uh, Keith. So from this perspective, I'm pretty much strongly in favor of versioning, I would say, regardless of whether we decide to incorporate breaking changes or not, having that kind of clarity going forward seems like just a good situation. Um, it'll make it easier for people to understand kind of what to expect. Um, but I also, the way I see the whole effort is that we're still kind of in the early stages of development, I would imagine and that there hasn't been enormous amounts of adoption out there. It's picking up all the time, which is great, and there is a lot of potential, but we're still in this kind of early stage where suppose we, if we make big changes now, there's gonna be relatively fewer consequences. Whereas if we have this conversation again in five or 10 years, and we're like, oh, well, do we wanna break things now? We're kind of deeper in it, and it's a lot harder to do that kind of stuff. So it's worth really considering this now, I would say, and also like, Suppose we do this and we say version two forward, like you have to have a version and everything that's not versioned, we're gonna assume is pre-version two. That seems pretty reasonable um, and something you can manage in the code base without too much trouble. And again, like as 10 years from now, we'll probably have 99% of the data V2 and onward, and it'll just be a tiny fraction. We could even start to roll off support in the way like Python does and say, you know, 10 years from now, version one and earlier, we're not gonna support in the code base. And that gives people a long time if they want to do something about it. I agree with that. It's a, simply a good idea to just include the version number. Yeah, thanks, Keith, for sharing. Um, Jan, you wanted to maybe reply to that? Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, I think I, I, I largely agree with what is said here, also about the versioning. Um, and also, I think that the current, uh, I mean, version one of the, of the fitness package, is, I think, is some, I mean, if we would not allow breaking changes, then, then we are not able to, to be more strict, I think. We can only be more more la more relaxed, basically. Uh, I think version one, and there, in, in some respects, there, that it's, it's quite, uh, it allows for a wide variety of, of, of input. Um, for example, when implementing the CSV reader, I had quite a lot of issue 
So with 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 uh, with the CSV spec that you can have, I mean, you can basically have any character as a as a as a decimal separator or a, as a code character, uh, according to the spec. And yeah, it, yeah, almost impossible to to implement that. So I think, for example, be, being more strict in some parts would also make the burden less. I think for a lot of implementers. Uh, so it, it, it's the principle is good that that you don't want breaking changes, but I think. Also good to 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 allow for breaking changes in some uh, small aspects. Uh... Yeah, thanks, um, Peter. Uh, Peter, you muted. Yeah. So on on versioning, we're one hundred percent clear that the specs should be versioned, uh, but I just want to make the distinction that it's also uh, requesting from data publishers to indicate what version of the specs they have used in the data package JSON so that an implementation can understand, oh, this is this version, I don't support this anymore, uh, or um, yeah, automatically upgrade or have like transformation so it can do things. I, I think that is very flexible. It doesn't paint us into a corner, which is very good too. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, and I think I think it would be good. It gives us a little bit more flexibility for version two, which should then clearly be called version two, to introduce things that are different from the current version one. Uh, but yeah, one of the big requirements is going to be asking to add a version in their uh, in in a data package JSON, so that implementers, if the version is not there, know oh, this is a legacy thing. Uh, that becomes a, a required field. The other thing I've noticed is that it might be very good in the data package repository to start having either a pre-release or a change log, because it would be very, we've gone through a number of issues and I would very much like per thing that has changed saying, this is a breaking change, this is a, a non-breaking change, uh, because I've started for every pull request that is accepted, starting on frictionless R to think, oh, there's an issue, I need to address this. But it would be a lot better if at the end of this thing that we're starting to write this change log so that at the end I can know, oh, these are all the ch changes, these ones are breaking, these ones are not breaking. And think, if Jenny, you would like this too for frictionless Spy, so you know, okay, these are all the tasks I need to do <laughs> if I want to implement version two. But yeah, I'm not against going with versions in frictionless and requiring data publishers to do so, it's going to allow much clearer communication at least, while still being um, conservative in making changes, of course. Yeah, thanks, Peter. I don't know if, Evgeny, you want to quickly reply to that um, already, already. I've already told in the chat the change log is already part of the project deliverables for the NLNet uh, fund for the spec version two, so that's going to happen. Um, Kyle, I know you had your hand raised before, but again, if you want to quickly reply to that, and then Kyle, I'll pass you the mic. I just wanted to add uh, like another thing that uh, regarding being so, if it's not uh, version, it's, uh, it's restricted to be uh, less and less flexible in the future, at least. The same uh, so the, the good example of this uh like thing that's been for in discussion for a while this uh, any format for data which is like totally inter not interoperable and um probably at some point if uh, the package is on really like industrial standard for data exchange it uh, probably needs to be removed somehow so that's the that good example of uh why probably a versioning is like the only kind of like will be only like possible solution to make it work. Uh, Kyle, um, I I agree. Versioning would be good for all the reasons we've said. Um, I think version two is also a great opportunity to include a version tag because 
um, that's adding a tag is a superset. And so there's no pain in doing it. And adding it for version two makes it so that version one has no version tag and then version two and beyond have version tags. So if we add, a, if we <laughs> wait till version three, then we have ambiguous version one and two, um, which is a potential problem. I think for me, the, the key with the, um, uh, the, the, the key with Peter's um, proposed rules is I think we need to clarify what a breaking change means um, because it's ambiguous whether we're breaking data or whether we're breaking implementation. Um, and I, I would actually argue that um, we can never, regarding implementation, we can totally stop supporting implementations. Regarding data, I don't think we can stop supporting data because um, uh, if, if, if you're trying to load a data set and it, it's breaking your implementation, that's just an apt update. Um, if you're trying to load something and you have data that it's not working with, um, then it's up to the maintainers to change those data or, you know, that, that, that's a lot more effort, um, on the, you know, that, that takes maintenance of the data packages and we want to be able to we, we want to be able to read a 20 year old data package if if we can um so it's a, it's a the, the consequences of of dropping support for existing data is a lot more than um adding a new feature to a data package that requires you to update your software in order to read Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Uh, Evgeny, did you want to reply to that? Um, yeah, and also kind of like uh, another thing that you complicate the picture even more that actually like implementations uh, actually try to read like any other package, whether it's like valid or invalid, they just try to do like the best. For example, this uh, well-known uh, world in data, uh, data sets on GitHub, all of them that the, like don't have name, but uh, we anyway like read it in I guess any implementation, right? Because we just need to provide like reading for users, and they don't really care about if uh, the this data package is valid or not. So it's yeah, it's like complex on many levels. So we just need to you know try to like squeeze. Well, I guess for for the most pragmatic like uh, ways, I think. Thanks again. Any other comments on that? I don't know, Peter, you wanted to say something. Yeah, just curious who's going to wrap this up as an issue to suggest adding the required version tag. I mean, I think there's a version tag in there, but as the version of the data sets, not the version of the specs that are used. Um, yeah, is it if Jenny, you or Sarah was going to uh, suggest an issue uh, to to add this because th this is a requirement for for moving forward with V two, um, and then in addition to that, I think it's still useful to have some rules on moving forwards uh, from version two upwards, so that the minor versions within version two uh, that we tried. I mean, they they. Yeah, since it's minor versions, they cannot be really breaking changes. Uh, but you have to have those rules and also like clarify why we have this. That is, we want to make sure that a version 2.0 data package that is deposited somewhere can still be read within five years. And I think it's up to the implementers to figure out if a version 1.0 can still be read. It would be good, um, but yeah, it's going to add a lot more legacy codes to to that to to do that yeah again um yeah i had a uh, link to the i think the most relevant issue regarding versioning and i uh, also just wanted to add that uh, we have a, a profile so metadata profile specification as well which if you read like the specification itself and how it's referenced in the, for example, um, like data package, it's basically not really defined what it means, profile, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a 
huge room for improvement here to qualify everything related to meta meta like level because currently basically doesn't say basically anything about what profile means if you like really read the text and on top of the profile we can have this version of stuff probably isn't the profile uh, supposed to be uh, um, either a label or uh, an URL to uh, the JSON schema? So you can refer to a specific tag in the, in the GitHub repository. So version 2.1, 2.2, et cetera. Yeah, currently it's uh, uh, all like table or data resource stream or link to the uh, profile profile URL, but uh, honestly speaking, I think it's not like really uh, well-defined uh, and works like good. So there's different issues on, on the specs uh, repository, like removing support for uh, shortcuts of the profiles, et cetera. So, 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 so basically the thing I'm going to like focus now to think what, what I can propose. Peter. But there's consensus here that it's the data package as a whole, all the specs under data package that are version, versioned as a whole, right? Not separately, a table schema is versioned separately from CSV dialects, etc. And that data publishers only need to indicate one version uh, in their data package JSON at the data package level. Okay. I agree. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, that's uh, the good way to go. For example, Apache uh, Row basically have exactly the same one version, a lot of specifications. So it's a kind of like standard way easier to handle. Does everybody agree here? Yeah. Good. So concerning the follow-up of this, uh, either Evgeny will create an issue or I can create an issue and then I'll tag you uh, so that we can have a working group vote also for those that are not here. Evgeny and Haifiel. Um, yeah, and also regarding profiles, it's a kind of like long shot, but uh, I was wondering if we can actually like also work on top of metadata profiles to provide functionality like uh, requested by Peter, I think, like required resources, for example, or other stuff. It also feels for me, you know, that can be done through the like some JSON schema uh, techniques. So I'm going to think about it uh, at the whole thing and see if I can, you know, start a discussion about it. Peter. I still have a question of how publishers should indicate the version. So currently you can indicate the profile that you are using, which can be a string, like it's a tabular data package, or it can be a URL to a JSON profile, which could be tabular data package. What we do in CamtrapDP, which is versions, is the profile always needs to be a URL, and that URL is pointing to a version of CamtrapDP, which is part of the uh, of that URL, and then parsers can get out a version there. Uh, that way, you cannot lie because you can you point to a profile, and it's immediately that version. While if you would point to a profile and then have a separate field where you indicate the version, those two might not be might not align. So I think we'll have to think. Um, like if we, for example, don't allow a string anymore as the profile. But we require profile to be a URL to a profile. But there's other issues there if that goes down. 
exactly. Um, yeah, but I think we'll have to think about how can you refer to a profile and also indicate the version, knowing that there can be a discrepancy between the two. That is what I mean, that you can lie about the profile that you're using, but then it's the burden is on is on you as a data publisher that you says, yeah, well, I used profile number 2.1 while you're actually using something else. You're communicating something incorrectly to the to an implementer. So I think those are things we have to think about how we can do that. I always uh, considered that uh, that string uh, some some kind of shorthand for uh, the the most current version, and uh, but I find uh, using a URL is most unambiguous. You can uh, use an URL to directly to a GitHub uh, repository that that re that's really returns the JSON. And then, uh, yeah, you cannot lie about it. This, that's just what you are going to use. And uh, maybe you might want to allow one string saying current, but you always want to read the current version. But uh, well, for me, that's about it. It's it's more it's it's less uh, unambiguous to to use to to allow the use of those strings. Thanks, Peter, and thanks, Jan. Uh, if Kennedy, do you want to reply to that? Um, yeah, there are, uh, there are like a few things. First of all, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, direction. Currently, the standard is taking uh, uh, based on Rufus, just like uh, inspiration on like URLs last years. Uh, that basically also I'm just worked on the descriptor qualification, serialization qualification, and also I'm adding currently it's for review that basically all the uh, spec descriptors are referenced only by uh, URL or URI. And uh, meaning that initially there are like your ideas of having like data package in DT5 registry or something. But uh, I think uh, it will be good if we just, you know, completely uh, URL based. So basically what is a uh, data package? It's a file somewhere. You can get URL for this file. Uh, as a data consumer, you can read this. It's uh, just about uh, reference. And having read this data package file, you have access to data, etc. So basically, I think it will be nice if it's also for profiles. But uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, if you if you kind of like uh, dive deeply in the current profiles, you can find super weird thing because uh, you you can set uh, for example that package profile to be uh, an arbitrary decision schema and implementation needs to validate your data package against this uh, JSON schema but if you have this JSON schema like with one property you basically disallow all the validation for data package so it's really need to be you know fully I think refat re re and uh, reviewed because uh, it's kind of like a carnage stone for the uh, standard. So uh, for example, Peter, in, in your com draft, if you don't have this extends data package profile, it will like lose all the validation for for the base data package, right? If you think about it. Yeah, if that URL is online or we decide to move the date, the CamTrap DP specs elsewhere from GitHub to something else, then yeah, things break. That is something uh, we no. That is something no, we I mean, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, CamTrap currently says that your JSON schema extends uh, data package. But if you remove this line, implementation won't be checking for the whole data package. JSON so schema only be checking for CamTrap. So it's like a huge hole in my understanding. So what, what we need to work on also. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somebody mentioned about link rot. Also, uh, and Jan just also made a remark about uh, um, internet access not always being there. So maybe there should be some advice to implementers that uh, they should cache that uh, uh, um, JSON schema. So it's always available. At least uh, they have a local copy of it. 
Yeah, I think that's a very good observation, actually. Um, I don't want to interrupt this discussion, but as Keith very well re reminded, we have 14 minutes left on the call. And I know that Albert and Jan wanted to bring up this code list attribute thing. Um, so unless there is something super urgent that you want to mention now in versioning, um, I would say the next step is either Evgeny or I, or I um, will start an issue and then we can continue discussing asynchronously on GitHub. But yeah, that's your moment if you want to add anything to the discussion right here. Uh, yeah, code list. Yeah, I hope uh, I read uh, all the specifications uh, completely. But um, yeah, what I mean with code list is that uh, you have some, some variable, let's say it's a num numerical va variable, from one to 10. And of course, each number could, could be a categorical, categorical variable and uh, it has some label. And yeah, we're trying to come up with a way to quickly label those numbers. And uh, so if you want to output, generate output, you will see you easily have those labels available. Let's say municipality codes that translate to municipality names or uh, disease codes to disease names, things like that. Is something like that available already or how is it treated? I couldn't find, uh, I could find some proposals like enums, but not something that seems to be very fixed or am I not correct? It's always cool to hear a use case that has already been discussed and there's been uh, <clears throat> A lot of discussion on this in the last uh, yeah two weeks. That's issue 875. I mean, it has enum and labels in the title, but it is to support, I think we should edit the title, to support categorical data. And it supports both codes and labels, or if you don't care about labels, but your codes are also meaningful to be able to express that there. I would suggest to read that issue. There's, I mean, it's quite long, but at the end, we're getting to uh, maybe look at the comments with most of the thumbs up. Uh, I'll maybe deep link here in the chat too, where there's a proposal to um, to, to do that. There's a huge demand from this from Kyle. Yeah, and I think as, well. as far as I'm concerned, that was one of the biggest things that were missing uh, in Frictionless. Like I, uh, yeah. Music to my ears. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That is, uh, um, but yeah, I, I should read the issue uh, thoroughly first. But is is uh, does it only support key key value data, or is sometimes we have uh, like higher hierarchical data that yeah you might as well like uh, region regional data like you have a, a city code and you want to map it to a province or a, another regional unit. And you want to refer to one data set that includes all these these levels. We have primary and foreign keys, oh, so okay. you can have a linking table. Okay. Um, maybe I should read up on it first, and then we might be able to talk about it more on Slack. I I also recently stumbled on a a really cool open source um package for dealing with hierarchical data like that and automatically generating SQL queries, if you want to talk more about that on the side. Okay, well, well we'd be interested to know more. Uh, Jan, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I want to add something. I think I have had a look at the, uh, at the uh, uh, GitHub issue, uh, but I think, yeah, maybe I will have to comment there, but what I think one of the, when it, I mean, the example Albert Jan gave was about 10 codes, but I think, for example, another another example would be, for example, when you work with medical data, you have ICD-10 codes, and then, then you want to indicate that this variable uh, has to correspond to, to an ICD-10 code. Um, then, then you're talking about, I don't know, uh, tens of thousands of codes that you, uh, yeah. Uh, so so the, the code list can become quite large for, for, uh, in, in some cases. Um, so what we have been doing is to, to, to link to external uh, data sets that, 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 that contain the codes. Um, we also looked at the, uh, um, uh, somebody else mentioned it, uh, I don't know what's called, the um, um, foreign keys uh, 
one of the disadvantage I think with the foreign keys is that it's not based on a, on a variable level, but it's based on data set level. Um, so you basically want to indicate that this variable, uh, this field is an ICD-10 code. Uh, and with foreign keys, you can say uh, this data set has a link to a data set containing ICD-10 codes. I think so the, 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 so you don't have a link between the variable and the code list, but between two data sets, I think, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Or am I? Um, Keith, I'm not sure if you wanted to reply to that or if otherwise I can give the floor to Ken. Or was I, it raised? Yeah, have raised for I will respond else. directly to the question if anyone else knows off the top of their head. I was going to respond more generally to the, the domain specific kind of values, but we'll come yeah. back to that. So, so Jan, I think it's um, in that issue. What's this number? Uh, 875. I think it would be good, actually. So we currently have uh, a property called categories, which is a list of the categories that from there you could also link out to a JSON schema that lists all the 10,000 categories that you have. So you don't have to repeat those in your um, in your data package or in your table schema all the time. Um, and it also allows to... So it is... There's a, a value and a label, but you can add any other property too. So you could, for example, say, well, the higher level category for that is this, and then you can bundle things together. And I think it's a, a good proposal to expand on that. Um, but yeah, you just reminded me that, uh, that that could be another feature that we include in there, uh, Kyle and uh, Phil, to allow to link to an external schema for this uh, for these categories. So the proposal as it stands right now is not scalable enough for all use cases. So it doesn't allow for like a 10,000 record uh, code list. Or uh, like if, when you have- If, if you have suggestions on how to build on that proposal or alternatives, I think it would be good to uh, either comment on that issue or submit uh, a, an extra issue. Uh, there's yeah. clearly a lot of demand for this feature and we, so we're starting off from something from scratch. So we have a lot of freedom in how to implement it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we will complement. Uh, we will com comment on the issue and look at it uh, in more detail. Yeah. So this is more for the future. It's not something that we're going to do overnight. But again, something that I bring up a lot and I think is useful to think about maybe uh, are two things that could help in this regard. The first is maybe formalizing our approach to handling of domain and profile. Because I have the sense that all of us, we have our own expertise, right? And we kind of have a sense for what things look like with our data types we're most familiar with. In many cases, there's overlap, right? Like a lot of fields, we talk about time, we talk about date, we talk about regions. And so it'd be great to sit down, figure out what we have in common, and kind of put that at the core and have like a core domain model where we can agree how we're going to talk about things. And then from there, one could imagine having like a mix in hierarchy or something where it's like, okay, we're in bio now. So we're going to talk about these biological related things. So we're going to have this start to work towards this profile there that extends the core profile and so on. So that's obviously a challenging problem, but useful and uh, worth considering. And then the second thing that I think we could think about for the long term is uh, like a dependency mechanism in data packages where you say like, okay, this is a data package. It depends on this uh, countries.csv or countries data package that has information about countries that we're gonna use in the labels or whatever. And that formalizing that and working towards that would be useful because there are a lot of cases where we're gonna, especially in the future going forward, like a, a lot of most of what I do these days is data integration. It's not looking at one data set, it's combining many data sets. And, that's going to be more and more common because there's tons of data out there and a lot of questions require you to draw from multiple data sets. So I think having that dependency mechanism will be also very useful. But isn't that dependency mechanism already present, like in the form of uh, data resources? Like you have a list, an array of data resources, and one of those elements is a, a country labels data set. 
I'm not sure if there's a way to like specify exactly the right one. Maybe if we use a URL. Yeah, that's and... the, the missing part, but it's largely present already. Yeah. It's close. It's getting there. But I'm also imagining this like future where there's a command line tool or something and you do like frictionless, you know, get and then specify a data package and it pulls the data package, looks through the dependencies and says, hey, I need these other guys. I'm going to grab them and cache them as well. And suddenly you can quickly like, you know, interface with repositories and pull data and have it handle all the kind of dependencies for you. And that depends on us thinking clearly about this uh, dependency mechanism aspect as well. Okay. Um, yeah, probably the only safe way to refer to refer to other data packages will be not by like resource path URL, but having a kind of like uh, a resource. Uh, fragment uh, resource identifier on top of data package JSON uh, mechanism. So if you have a version data package and you uh, you need to refer to a resource, something like a HTTP like fragment, uh, it will be the only like safe way because uh, the path of the resource can be changed under the data package without like notification. But it's, uh, yeah, it's also like, Really not for today's discussion. So the best place to discuss on this uh, further is uh, in that particular issue. Issue. I think so. Either there, or if you read through the issue and you see, well, I'm actually suggesting something a bit more than that. You could start a separate issue linking to that one having a proposal like this is the use case i want to do this um I, I i have no idea yet if it fits in the scope of what we want to do there or if it's something way beyond that so that's up to you okay uh keith i don't know if your hand is raised from before if you wanted to add something to the discussion uh no it's just raised before but I did want to say thanks to Peter for taking all the time to put together um, and like add some clarity to a lot of the discussions and you know formalizing how we're going to approach making changes and all that. So that you know takes a lot of work and thought. So I appreciate you doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome. Thanks, Peter. Um, we have two minutes left on this call. Um, there were a couple of other things that we wanted to discuss, but maybe, um, I mean, for sure, that's not enough time. Um, so we'll just postpone, I guess, the discussion to the next call or maybe do it asynchronously on Slack. Uh, let's see. Um, the next call, um, I actually wanted to ask you um, because it's going to fall around the Easter holidays for those who are going on holidays. So we could do it either on the 20th, well, the normal, the date, Normally it would be the 28th of March, but I don't know if some of you are on holiday. And so I wanted to ask you whether you prefer to do it a week earlier or if keeping the 28th is fine. Well, if it coincides with the holiday, then maybe it uh, might be safer to do one week earlier. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Um, sorry, what did you say, Keith? I said both should be fine for me. So maybe shift earlier if some people can't do the holiday week. Yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, Peter, the suggested data, either the 21st uh, of March or the 28th. Okay, good. Um, I might do it a week earlier just to be safe, but I think it's both uh, fine. I'll ask also other people that are not on the call, just to make sure. Uh, but so expect an invitation for either of those dates. Uh, so let's see what the other what the other say. Um, okay. Other than that, um, thank you all for joining. Uh, as usual, it was a very interesting discussion. Uh, I'll see you all next month, and uh, we'll keep discussion discussing either on GitHub or on the Slack chat. Thank you. Have a good rest yeah, of the thank day. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.